everyone knows that Manchester United has faced turbulent times since the departure of their greatest ever leader, football legend Sir Alex Ferguson. But why? Is it just that simple? Let's find out. Perhaps the answer lies with Ed Woodward. Though many have contributed to the downfall of this great club, Ed Woodward in particular made sure he had a hand in almost every step of that decline. Believe it or not, Ed Woodward is back in the news at the moment because rumours have been surfacing that he may be advising potential buyers of Manchester United Football Club. United have been put on the market by the Glazers and famous news outlets are reporting that Ed Woodward is the man that investors are seeking advice from. How did Woodward originally arrive at Manchester United again? That's right, advising the Glazer family during their takeover. It couldn't happen again, could it? United fans will certainly hope not. Woodward is infamously not a football man, and yet somehow in 2012 he had worked his way through various financial and business posts in the club to become the executive vice chairman. Just a year later, the same year Sir Alex left the club, Woodward would receive a promotion granting him the keys to Old Trafford. He was awarded the ability to restructure the club's boardroom and have a say in sporting decisions at Old Trafford. Such power and control remained for Woodward for the next eight years. Undoubtedly, the most difficult eight years in modern history for Manchester United, and possibly of all time, given that the club is now so used to success, Woodward critically oversaw a gross betrayal of the fans, having been more than a keen advocate for the creation of a European Super League, an idea that would kill the domestic football that we know and love. Woodward also proudly presided over a mind-boggling transfer policy that saw United splash their way into more and more debt with no real policy or strategy behind spending. He even broke some records, with Manchester United's longest trophyless run since the mid-1980s. Coincidence? Probably not. For reasons like these, Ed Woodward has written himself into the Old Trafford history books for all the wrong reasons. Woodward studied physics at university and later went on to become a chartered accountant. Then, in 1999, as United was storming into a famous treble, he was storming into the Mergers and Acquisitions office as an investment banker for JP Morgan. Even before Woodward set foot in Old Trafford, his background wasn't going to sit well with a large proportion of the dedicated fan base. Maybe he was a decent numbers man, but what did he know about a football club? Woodward's first few years at United passed without too much incident. Why? Because Woodward was working in a strictly commercial role at the time. He didn't have any power when it came to football-related decisions. At the time, he was in charge of the club's media and sponsorship deals, a job in which, it has to be said, he had some success and made a lot of money for the club. The club's commercial revenue more than doubled under the watch of Ed Woodward. He was credited for landing lots of lucrative sponsorship deals for the club between the years of 2005 and 2012. Perhaps Woodward should have stayed in this role. From 2012 onwards, as mentioned, Woodward somehow became involved in technical decisions on the sporting side of the club, an area in which he had little to no experience, not least at the top level of global football. During his eight years as executive vice chairman, Manchester United had five different managers, and two in particular openly spoke out against Ed Woodward. Louis van Gaal denounced his transfer policy. He claimed Woodward was hurting the club, and Jose Mourinho criticised him on the back of rumours that Woodward was actively vetoing Mourinho's preferred signings. The team more than struggled to meet the standards that they had previously set in the domestic and European game over this period, drifting in and out of mediocrity and not challenging for the Premier League or Champions League. Problems behind the scenes continued to mount, and match-going fans grew more and more frustrated. Some of the signings that Woodward helped oversee in that period can now be looked back on as disastrous for the club's football and finances. Obviously, they spurred a lot of money, but these failed transfers also created a merry-go-round in the dressing room, and no team strives in such an unstable and uncertain environment. In the 2013-2014 season, Mawan Fellaini arrived from Everton for $33 million. This dodgy signing was a sign of things to come under Underwood. Fellaini certainly wasn't a world-class player, nor was his more rugged Route 1 suited style something that the fans at Old Trafford were used to seeing. The following season, Ankel Di Maria arrived from Real Madrid for a whopping $75 million. Undoubtedly one of the worst signings of the Woodward era, despite the fact that Angel de Maria, seven years later, is still a vital right-hand man to a World Cup chasing Lionel Messi. His time in Manchester was turbulent. 
After just one season, he headed to PSG, and United made a loss on the sale of Di Maria and spent a fortune on his wages while he scored just three goals in 27 appearances. The Di Maria transfer was a part of a trend, throwing wages at big-name players. Radamel Falcal and Zlatan Ibrahimovic came to United at different points in the Woodward reign, but were on huge money despite being aging stars. Zlatan did have one stellar season at United, but seasons like this were dwarfed by the amount of unsuccessful campaigns that United signings had under Woodward. A man who was employed for his business now was seemingly acting without strategy and desperately throwing enough muck at the wall, hoping it would stick. Only when you look back at Woodward's eight years in charge can you see the severity of the situation. How could a system so blatantly broken go on and on for years? It's no wonder frustrated United fans staged protests. In the 2015-2016 season, Morgan Schneiderlin, Memphis Depay and Anthony Marshall came for a combined fee of $130 million. Tony Marshall has had sporadic periods of excellence at United, but the less said about the other two signings, the better. A year later, Paul Pogba returned to Old Trafford from Juventus for a staggering world record fee of $105 million. He had left United for Juventus on a free transfer in 2012. Smart business, huh? Ahead of the 2017-2018 season, United spent another $200 million. This time on Romelu Lukaku, Victor Lindelof, Nemanja Matic and Alexis Sanchez. The latter, like many other big money United signings, was on top of the world when he arrived at Old Trafford and soon fell from grace. It was as if United had been cursed, perhaps by Ed Woodward. In the 2018-2019 season, Fred arrived for $60 million. Fred is still a servant of the club but has spent years being the brunt of jokes from fans of other clubs. Maybe he will have the last laugh and earn a World Cup winner's medal this year. But he arrived for big money at United and took a long time to make positive contributions to the team. Woodward's last full season in charge of United's football project was in 2019-2020. Harry Maguire was purchased from Leicester for a mind-boggling $87 million. He quickly took Fred's position as being the subject of the jokes from opposing fans, and his price tag invited scrutiny following various dodgy performances. Not only did a lot of money go awry on these players, the on-pitch implications of the club transfer policy were clear for all to see. Manchester United's global giants were being laughed at by once small neighbours Manchester City and worrying more about Thursday night football than Wednesday night football. The havoc and uncertainty created by this transfer policy was allowed to stand for eight years, and even then Woodward wasn't sacked. He ran off with his tail between his legs. Woodward was just as unpopular as the club's owners, the Glazer family, but they're another story. They were both targets of ongoing protests by United fans in the form of banners and chants, but in 2020, and it has to be said unacceptably, some so-called United fans took matters into their own hands and decided to attack Woodward's family home. The line was crossed here, but the event shows just how much tension and frustration was caused in the years leading up to Woodward's resignation, and undoubtedly the most unpopular move was yet to come, all in a surreal 48-hour period that led to Woodward's welcome departure. On April 18th, 2021, 12 major European football clubs, including Manchester United and five other top Premier League teams, announced their intentions to form a European Super League. The exact detail of how that project might look was still in the works, but football fans of Manchester United knew that they had signalled their intent to break away from the domestic game and form an NBA-style European football circus, where they wouldn't have to worry about relegation or financial struggle. They wanted to create a fantasy league where big-name matchups week in, week out could help them to line their pockets forever. The fact that Woodward was so involved in this plan was the final nail in the coffin for his career. Even if part of you had 1% sympathy for Woodward, or thought that other factors may have been more important in the club's decline, now the world could say with 100% clarity that Woodward had shown his true colours. That a man who had spent over a decade inside the club could not have been more out of touch with the very people that ensure its survival. The fans. Protests instantly sparked across England. 
especially outside the stadiums of the clubs involved. Like scurrying rats, owners began to change their minds on joining the Super League and apologise to their loyal fan bases. No less than two days later, the idea of the Super League was in the mud. All English clubs had renegated on their proposal and best of all, Ed Woodward announced his resignation from Manchester United. Woodward built his own bed and now he had to lie in it. It has since emerged that the hierarchy at Manchester United was key drivers in this project and that a lot of the money from the club itself went into research for the Super League. Yikes. In the two days between the Super League being announced and Woodward's resignation announcement, he was said to have received huge backlash from fans, journalists and even Manchester United players, so much so that he felt he could not go on in his role at Old Trafford. Fans may debate over whether Woodward was greedy, reckless, ignorant or all of the above, but what is certain is that he could not have turned United fans any further against him. He had proved many times that he did not care for their opinions, that he did not consider what a football club truly means to its match-going followers. Funnily enough, another of the key figures in the European Super League project was Juventus boss Andrea Agnelli. He resigned from his position at the club last week along with everyone else in his senior staff. It was rather all of a sudden and has come amid rumours of another scandal, so Woodward really was in good company. The more you look at Ed Woodward, the more you read about Ed Woodward and the more you hear about Ed Woodward. You would be forgiven for seeing him less as a little cocky but ignorant banker who has managed to land a top job at Manchester United and more as a conniving and calculated supervillain who has plotted the downfall of the institution from within. Woodward became blind to the thousands of faces that sat around him at Old Trafford every other Saturday and for that his eventual downfall became a formality. United was a business to Woodward but it is life and death to thousands of working people in Manchester and across the world. Not all was or is perfect at the club apart from Edward Woodward, far from it. But for United fans, his forced resignation was a step in the right direction and a show of strength from the fans, a clear sign that the voice of the average footballer follower is still a very powerful tool, even in the modern world of football that seems to be raging against it. Interested to see how The Butcher is proving two former Liverpool legends wrong? Click here. Want a breakdown of the rise and fall of Mason Greenwood? Click here. Click here.